Hi guys, Steve Blaggard here again. This is part two of how I convert center fire cases to rim fire. In the first part, I showed how I uh, plugged the center fire hole with a, a brass plug soldering in place and then faced it off in the lathe. I should note that you don't have to have a lathe. You don't have to have a milling machine for doing this job. It just makes it easier. But if you don't have a lathe after you've soldered the plug in, you can just file that, that smooth chuck in a drill press hole to file underneath it, several ways to do it. So, you know, don't, don't let that discourage you if you don't have a lathe. So here in part two, uh, we're going to drill the offset chamber for the acorn blank, uh, which will be the rim fire primer. So I have a case set up here in the drill press. Now I've done this in the mill too, but the, actually the lathe, I mean the uh, drill press is, is a little easier. So um, I'm going to start out by drilling it with a 3.30 seconds pilot hole. I've already center punched the location where I want the hole to be. And in this case, this is a 44 rim fire for my Ballard that I'm making here. The ideal location is right at the juncture of the brass plug and the edge of the primer hole, which is convenient because it's easy to see. And then I take a center punch and put a little, a little spot there with a the center punch for the drill to start in. So I can kind of tell where it needs to go. And that puts the primer all the way to the outer edge as far as it can go and still have the not be impinging on the sidewall as I drill down through it and that puts the the rim of the of the 22 blank almost to the edge of the case here so that's about where you want it so uh, so we're ready to start I'm going to start out with drilling a little pilot hole first uh, and then I'm going to go to a number two drill bit which is about uh, 220 thousandths 219 220 or so uh, and then we're going to follow up with a 224 chucking reamer. Uh, and then we'll use a 930 seconds drill bit to cut the rim recess. So there's four different uh, operations here. Uh, so it sounds complicated. Yeah, it is. It's a bit of work to make these. But once you're done, you've got them and, and they work pretty good. So let's go ahead and drill this pilot hole here. I've got it set up already and aligned. You know. Go. All right, there's our pilot hole. So now we go through, start going through the process of changing bits. Let me take that out. I'm going to replace it with the number two, which gets us really close to the size of the uh, the 22 blank. The 22 is about the diameter of the case is about 225 to 226, depending on the brand and all that. So this is going to get us to about 220, I think it is, and then uh, we'll use the reamer to to get to the final the final size. Um, one little trick I do, I'll just share with you. Um, I've already got it lined up, and I don't think I bumped it, so it should be good to go. But I always check it. I'll bring the drill bit down just to touch the case, and then by hand, just turn it backwards a couple turns. And that will center the tip of the drill bit in the pilot hole that's already there. That way I know I'm on center. All right. So here we go. Okay, now we're going to drill... So you're drilling all the way through the solid case head here. All right, there we go. Okay. Now hopefully you can see that. I don't know how well the camera is picking it up. Um, but hopefully you can see what's going on. I'm just trying to see. Yeah, okay. Uh, we've got some glare. Hopefully we'll get this light up so you can see the hole a little bit. We just drilled a little bit better. Okay, so... Now I'm going to take the number two bit out, and I'm going to go with a 224 chucking reamer. Now, don't be uh, taken back by this. This is not something that's some exotic uh, tool. I got this off eBay uh, for about 20 bucks, so it's not much more than a quality drill bit. Um, and 224, it's a 224 thousandths chucking reamer. So. I'm just going to put that in here. Now I know a drill is drill bit is. I mean a drill press is not the ideal thing for doing a a uh, running a reamer, 
but you know for what we're doing here we're not talking about precision super precision kind of work here so it's easy to do and it works i never claimed to be a not a machinist i'm not a gunsmith just a home tinkerer okay now i'm going to put a little bit of oil on the uh on the reamer just to lubricate a little bit now the reamer i'm going to run really slow so i'm going to bring it right down to the to the hole to start it and then i'm going to turn the speed down on the drill to press and see i'm just going to run it slowly here and just ease it down and this reamer just cuts a perfectly smooth perfectly round hole where a drill bit uh is not perfectly round contrary to what you may think so just turn it really slowly and that cuts the precision hole all right that's it hole is reamed now to 224 thousandths okay all right the last step here at the drill press is to cut the recess for the rim so i'm using a 9 30 seconds drill bit here uh, is just the right size for cutting the rim recess all right okay again i want to check my alignment so i'll put the bit down and turn it backwards just a couple turns to make sure we're centered all right turn the speed back up a little bit Now this is the kind of tricky part because I have to judge the depth and the depth is going to be based on the, the rim of the 22 acorn blank. So I'm going to drill a little bit and I'll show you how I just check it. Alright, let's see where we're at. So I want the rim to be a little below the surface so I'm going to take the little acorn blank here we can see that if we focus on it I don't know if it does or not it's a little acorn blank just a super short little 22 I'm going to put it in upside down with the acorn blank pointing up uh, just so I can see how far the rim is below the surface and I think that looks pretty good um, but let me, I'm going to, I think I got a little burr on there. I just want to clean it up a little bit. Okay. So let's just test fit this again. All right, that looks plenty good. Okay, so I'm gonna take it out here. Blow out the debris. And we'll put it in the right way. And if you can see, that is seated in there now. Okay, so let me knock this out. It's just a light press fit. So, okay, I'm going to take it over to the to the milling machine now and mill the little uh, relief underneath where the firing pin's going to hit. And you can do that with a file too. It's really easy to do with a file, but since I have the machine, I'm going to do it. I'll show you how I do it there. So I'm going to pause it and then reset up over there. Okay, guys, I'm back. I'm over here at the milling machine. I've got the case set up here. I'm going to mill the relief for the firing pin. because, And this is on the outer edge of um, the, from where the offset is. I mean, this is on that edge. Because when the firing pin hits the rim fire, the, the 22 blank, you can't have a solid brass edge uh, next to it or underneath it. Otherwise, the firing pin can't crush that, that uh, rim fire edge. So I cut a relief there just so the firing pin can crush it. It's not hindered by the brass. So it's a, I'm going to take about uh, 25 thousandths just off that edge, and I'll show you that if we get done here. So 
Oh well, man, I've got it zeroed. I mean, again, you can just do this with a file too. It doesn't have to be anything precise. You just file in that little relief in it. All right, here we go. So the only thing really left to do now is to deburr the case. You know, it's got some burrs that get thrown up from it. Let me grab my little drill bit here. So since there's some burrs that get thrown up from the uh, from the mill, I'll take that three thirty or nine thirty seconds bit and just turn it by hand in here just to get any of those burrs out of the way. And. Let's see, hopefully you can see this now. And you can see the relief cut on the outer edge here. I'm hoping this is focusing enough. Sorry, it's hard to tell, but I can, I've got some still photos that are a lot clearer to see if uh, I, can, I can put up. So let's take the, uh, so here's our acorn blank. Again, I don't know if you can see these. It's just a little, little guy here, but it works just fine for a primer. And I'll put that into the case and hopefully you can see how that sits flush just to, just slightly below the surface and uh, it is offset to the side so when we put it in the rifle we just have to orient it so the primer is facing matching the uh, position of the of the firing pin so that's pretty much it in a nutshell that's how I make these uh, reloadable rimfire cases uh, it's a bit of work, but you can see uh, we pretty much did it real time here. You can see once you get things set up and you do it a couple times, it doesn't take that long. And once you've uh, you've made them, then you've got cases you can use in whatever your antique gun is. Whether it's a, you know, there's a lot of 38 rimfire, 32 rimfire uh, revolvers out there. Quite a few, a lot of a lot of old rifles out there in rimfire calibers that are gathering dust somewhere. So this gives you an, a, a way to put them back in action. Now, there are a couple places online that do sell reloadable rimfire cases, and that's great. Um, and uh, they may not have every caliber, so if you have something odd, um, if you don't want to spend the money, you want to take a little time to make your own, you can do it this way. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. I know I've had a lot of people who are interested in my video showing uh, me shooting the rifle with this, so I thought it would be a good, good idea to share how I do it. Like I said, there's other ways to do it. Uh, I'm not saying mine's the best way, but it's just what works for me. So, well, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions. Uh, glad, to, glad to help you out if you've got one you want to work on. All right, y'all take care. Thanks. Bye.